It's looking a little bit like lungs. But we all have lungs and they're great. Today, we're gonna be making meatloaf wellington. So I must admit, the first and last time I ever made meatloaf was for an ex. And while the meatloaf turned out amazing, the relationship wasn't as successful. But I'm really excited to dive into this meatloaf today and hope that I can retain some of the meatloaf making skills from the past. Let's get into this. Going through the ingredients ahead of time, it requires eggs, soft breadcrumbs, which I've never worked with before. Usually I have dry breadcrumbs, red wine, which on part of the theme, you know, we have champagne, so we do, we're gonna have our wine, maybe we'll sneak in a little sip or two. And then onion, bay leaves, beef, canned liver spread, which I have never touched. I know liver is healthy for you, so that one's a little bit of a question mark. Frozen patty shells, a slightly beaten egg, and a mock paragordine sauce. So. I am gonna admit I have absolutely no idea what a mock Perigordine sauce is, and I'm not really sure if I'm saying that correctly. What I do have in my back pocket, the Brass Sisters, and I'm gonna give them a call. They are all things food, and they're really the queens of heirloom cooking. If you have no idea what heirloom cooking is, think of heirloom jewelry that would be passed down. So heirloom cooking is similar to that, where you have these recipes that have been passed down, and we are gonna give them a call, and hopefully they will be able to help me and guide me on how to make this mock Perigordine sauce, and let me know if I'm even saying it correctly. Let's call them right now. See how this goes. Imagine Broad City, but a little bit older. They're phenomenal. Hi! How are you guys? How's that? It looks great. You look great too. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep up with you guys. <laughs> so I'm really excited that you guys are able to help me with this. I have no idea what Meatloaf Wellington is, and I have never made a mock Perigordine sauce. Did you guys ever grow up eating this or making this? I have to say we grew up eating meatloaf, but we never had the sauce until we were young adults in the 1970s. Well, I'm excited to make it so you guys can help me with this because I have absolutely no idea. I have to say this. Now, Sheila, there are some ingredients to this sauce. And they come from the area, you know, the southwestern part of France. Okay. And I'll tell you, one of them is black truffles. Now, those are fancy. I have heard of truffles. Okay, now I've got to tell you, sweetie, that um, if you want to buy truffles, you're going to have to make a decision. And the decision is going to be whether you want to pay your rent this month. <laughs> Do you want to buy black truffles? So truffles, avocado, or rent. We'll, we'll see how it weighs out. Right. Well, I think if you stick, stick with the rent and the avocado, what you feel, you're going to be fine. We have a substitute. Thank you. I was going to ask, what can you substitute if you can't get the truffles? Okay, now we made this a few years ago, and it came out, if I do say so, very nice. Okay, so what you're doing is you've got the saute pan. I would suggest that you add um, some olive oil, and some unsalted butter. And they're really fans of butter, so we can be a little heavy-handed with this. This feels right. You <laughs> can go with this for right now. And then I would add the shallots. The shallots. Has anyone else been calling these shallots their entire life? You know, just cut them up into dice and then add them and fry them up until they're sort of glossy looking. Okay. They didn't give me an exact measurement, so I'm just gonna do what feels right. So I'm gonna get some of the shellac in there. It looks like it could be a lot. Then I take them out and I put them in a little uh, dish. I'm gonna take these out because we have other stuff to cook and these also have to get added back in. Um, no, we're going to do the mushrooms, Sheila. Next up, mushrooms. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're going to take the mushrooms, which have been cut into 
you know, vertically into thin strips. And the Brass Sisters told me to cut this lengthwise. So I'm gonna go ahead, thin slices. You will end up with, I would say, about a cup of fried mushrooms. Kind of mind blowing that everyone just knew how to make this back in the day since this recipe that was submitted just called for the mock Perigordine sauce and had no actual instructions. Maybe the modern day equivalent is ordering on Postmates or something. Like, you don't need someone to tell you how to do that. You take those out and you will put them in a little plate with the shallots. The brass sisters told me I would know when it felt right and it feels like it's right, so I'm gonna take this one off this to my bowl that already has the shallots in there. Then you get your chicken livers. And what's next is going to be a first, maybe for all of us, chicken liver. Um, looking at this, I'm trying to process and wrap my mind around what's in front of me right now. It looks very familiar because I actually have a liver. So it, it's a very interior look to it. Um, I've never had these to eat. Let me know in the comments if you've eaten these before. Hashtag team liver or hashtag or nah. This may not be a thing, I don't really know. I don't smell anything. I do know that this is very healthy and it gives you iron, but I also know that you can buy iron pills or eat something else. I'm gonna dredge it in a little bit of flour. Okay, feeling this for the first time. Okay, I can do this. And you dip them in flour, and you add a little bit more oil and, and butter. Oh, you know how they say everything tastes like chicken? This feels just like a chicken cutlet. It, it feels just like chicken breast. Um, if you close your eyes, you're handling a little chicken cutlet. Um, when you open your eyes, it looks like something from health class. So I'm gonna dredge this in flour. And just know, usually you wouldn't wanna put anything raw on your cutting surface that you're using for other things. Because this is the final thing that I'm doing and I'm not gonna be cutting anything else on here, it's okay, we're not gonna get contaminated. Everything will be just fine. So the pan is already heated up. I still have my oil and I have my butter in there. Let's get these in. And you fry up those chicken livers until they're nice and crunchy. And they, you know, that no pink shows. I'm gonna cook these until they're just not pink anymore. Don't get so mesmerized by the fact that you're actually making liver that you forget that you're actually making liver and you don't prepare it the right way. And you'll be able to tell. Because if you, oh, you will. <laughs> okay. You can't make it wrong. How does that make you feel? I feel like I can make it wrong, but... Oh, I, it's looking a little bit like lungs. But we all have lungs and they're great. They help us, we need them to breathe. The smell right now is still just butter. I don't have a strong liver smell at all, which makes it kind of nice because I always want to eat butter. And I'm gonna stick with that. How did chicken become the thing that everything tastes like and smells like and feels like? I'm discovering this process and I wish that the, the Brass Sisters could pop in right now and give me a little bit of guidance and whisper in my ear and tell me, my child, you're almost there, a little bit further. I'm gonna take those out when they're done. No pink showing. Okay. And I'm gonna uh, make some, them into dice, you know. I'm gonna take them out now. The smell is amazing. It smells like chicken and bacon. And as I pull these out, there's a really nice um, layer of crust in there, which I'm gonna end up using to make the fond. 
Oh, it smells like sausage. It smells like breakfast sausage, so think brunch. This is very brunch worthy right now. Um, I'm gonna cut this up into some smaller pieces. And remember how before I said I was done with the cutting board so I could just put the raw meat on there? Um, I lied. I had, <laughs> I wasn't done with it. So make sure that you can either just clean your cutting board or you have an extra surface that you can use. I'm gonna sneak a little bite. Here's my finger. I feel like I need a chaser. Consistency is a little something. It's um, a little chewy. So it's like um I'm trying to I'm trying to think. The outer bits are have a little crunch to them, which I really like, but it tastes soft like you're eating bone marrow. If you've ever had bone marrow, I'm curious. I'm not immediately turned off to it, which I thought I would be, but if you're someone who has issues with texture, just go into it knowing that it's chewy and soft. Okay, next comes um, the adventure with the fawn. The key to this recipe is using the Madeira wine. Start with a splash. Do you guys ever have a sip of wine while you're cooking? Only to test <laughs> to test the, the bouquet of the wine. This is the truth. This is the truth. I believe you. You know, we don't drink wine, beer, or liquor. And if I'm going to pass on any good information to someone younger than myself, never buy cooking wine. It is salty and it tastes like dregs of wine. <laughs> and you're going to want this to be on high heat. And as that is burning off, I'm gonna go in and really scrape the bits. And this is making what they told us is called fond. And I actually never knew that the crunchy bits with a little bit of wine or any other liquid, scraping that was called fond. So I just realized that my entire life I've been doing this, which is pretty professional, like high level. So I've been channeling the Brass Sisters unknowingly all these years. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit and add in my broth. Or no, not broth, stock. Does anyone really know the difference between broth or stock? If you actually do, let me know. I know that it can be a big debate. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the stock. So I'm gonna continue scraping this, just making sure all the bits are in there. It's a nice amount of stock in there and then I'm gonna reduce this down. So now the sauce is reduced. And a pro tip, you can tell that it's reduced when you see this crust on the sides. That is a really good marker. So I'm gonna turn down my heat and add back in my other prepared ingredients. It looks very much like a stew. Or actually like gravy. I wonder if you could just take a biscuit and, act, and do this with biscuits. This may be one of those items that does double duty. Nearing the end of this process, I'm gonna taste it first before I salt and pepper. Wow, this is actually really good. Oh my God, the flavors in this are so good. I think it's the beef stock that's jumping out right now. This would be a bomb gravy on top of a biscuit. You guys could just stop right here and eat this as is, but we have an amazing meatloaf, so we're gonna keep going. Um, tastes amazing. That's so good. The recipes may have been a little wild back then, but they were really tasty. People were not missing meals. Um, the last step, channeling the amazing Brass Sisters, butter, can't ever have enough butter. Um, you know what, let's just squeeze a little bit out. <laughs> I'm gonna use a spoon. Cooking does not have to be perfect. It just has to taste good and be fun. And that is the final thing I'm gonna add to this.
I'm blown away by this sauce because I wasn't expecting much with the liver. It was just a lot of question marks in crickets. I had no idea. Um, but this tastes absolutely amazing. A little bit like beef stroganoff. I grew up having my mom make this. For me, you could probably take this sauce and add it on noodles. You could take this sauce and add it on a biscuit. Um, I'm trying to think what else you could do it with. Ooh, maybe ramen. It tastes like beef flavored ramen, which I don't know what's making, I mean, maybe it's just the beef stock because it's kind of masking the liver, the liverness of it all. Um, this is really, really good. Is she something? She's, she's mine. You're mine. I like that. I'll be yours. I mean, you guys can so share. Some of your honorary grandmothers or aunts or something. No, you did beautifully. So amazing. Before I eat all of this sauce, let's get on with making meatloaf Wellington. Well, it's always wonderful when we talk, and you know, you you really are such a great budding cook and baker. I'm so proud of you. Aren't you proud of her, Sheila? I keep telling you, she's mine. <laughs> and you know, this is what makes everything worthwhile, because if we can sort of chat with someone who is doing something, the, you know, the way you're doing it, it makes everything we've learned and done worthwhile. So we want to pass it on. Thank you guys. I shall take it from you and try to now, here's not mess this up. That's a kiss. Thank you. It has to be a kiss from the food flirts. That's right. That's right. If you want to be a food flirt, you can be one too. Thank you. Am I the honorary third sister? Yes. yes. You are the third food flirt. Thank you guys so much. The third sister? Yes. Oh, no, she can't be a sister. Why? Because she's, she's like a niece or a granddaughter. All right. I mean, I don't know what <laughs> world you're living in, you know, but you think that you're, you know, you could, her, in her league. <laughs> no, her age group. No, we're not in her age group. No. No. Only in our dreams. Oh, thank you guys so much. I'm excited to give this a try. And um, I hope it turns out just a fraction as good as the stuff that you guys are making. Oh, well, you, you let us know. And don't be afraid to put in that. See this? What? Your hand just bit 